This meeting of the Romulus Board of Education will be called to order at 6.02 p.m. May I have roll call, please? Ms. Bowles. Here. Ms. Kraut. Here. Ms. Funderburg. Here. Ms. Buckley. Here. Ms. Beard. Here. Mr. McLaughlin. Present. Mr. Theed is present. Thank you. Could we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, our next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Uh, board members, uh, there was an email sent out about an addition under other. Please disregard that item. Uh, will not be an action item, but we will discuss it under uh, communications and concerns of board members. Uh, with that, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. I motion to approve the agenda. Support. It's been moved by Mrs. Kraut, supported by Mrs. Buck Funderburg. Funderburg, sorry. I have to look up more. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you. Um, Dr. Daniels, I will let you introduce uh, Ms. Hall. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we're real pleased this evening to uh, have a special guest with us. You know, one of the things that we've been looking at is how are, how do we get the good word about Romulus Community Schools out there? You know, we know we have wonderful things going on in our buildings and in our school and in our community. And really, you know, making sure that everyone knows it is, has been a challenge for us. And um, one of our communities has had an opportunity to um, meet with um, uh, Mrs. Hall and she's with Colossus. And we have a partnership. They have adopted one of our elementary schools. So it's, it's a, a long-standing partnership that we've been going with right, right now. She's going to share some of the other possible things that um, they might be able to provide for us for our consideration as, as we go forward, making sure that uh, everyone knows exactly who we are and, and what their district we are. Thank you. And just as an aside, I knew Tiffany when she was a little baby. Oh, <laughs> now she's all grown <laughs> 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 little babies, right? Those <laughs> <laughs> presentations Did we get the microphone situation? I think we did. Okay. Hopefully everybody can hear me. I was a cheerleader, too. You have to use the microphone, though. No. You'll have to use that mic, though, so people in TV house. land can hear you. Yeah. Please. No Thank problem. you. Like Dr. Daniels expressed that Velasquez does have a partnership now with Romulus Schools. And it kind of came about, I think it's maybe two sisters. One sister that's a director here and the other may be a counselor or a teacher for the district. And uh, they thought of some cool creative ways to, you know, basically offer supplies to students who may be in need. And, and it really turned in, we saw the better side of everybody with that we worked with and everyone came out in big way it was a big deal it wasn't really from our ceo on down so when we got the call about you know you guys potentially needing some marketing experts we we're like hey that's what we do we can help out with this <laughs> this is lightweight we can totally help you with this so with further ado it is under rhyme of the schools here you gotta put it So uh, how we came about, Sue and I kind of met, uh, Ms. Mitchell and I met, I got to get out of the professional world, I know in education we call <laughs> each other by our last names, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we met uh, to discuss some of your goals, and I know some of your goals were to capture pre-K students, so to get them earlier in the process, as well as you know, uh, tell people about all the cool things that are going on at your high school, which is phenomenal. I just had the opportunity to put my son in the basketball league here, which I didn't know about. Kind of happened to find out about it. It was really, really cool. The high school coach was present and kind of helping the little kids, so it was a great experience as a parent. Well, with variable data, this is the clicker. Is it not working? You can help me out a little bit. <laughs> you can click some. If you see, go to this next. Okay, we can just bring them all up. We have a new product at Velasquez, and it's called Variable Data Postcards. And what it is, it's an, a, it's an ability for us to deliver direct mail to households um, on a one-to-one -one basis. So we would say Tamika, we would say Sandra, we would say Danielle, and you guys would be neighbors. And we know interesting details about what's in your household. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> <laughs> but we're the good guys. <laughs> So we know if you have two children and what their ages are, if you, you don't have children and so on. So we do have the unique ability to, you know, look at the dynamics within that household as well as ethnicity and so on. Well, in, in our world of when we're dealing with the Procter and Gambles of the world and I know vitamin world, I was just there the other day, so I can use them as an example. Um, we use these dynamics to let them know heavy vitamin users and so on in their household. And we could do the same for you in Romulus. You guys are looking for pre-K students, we can find those people for you. If you're looking for the middle-aged student, we can definitely find those people for you. So with this, if you guys could notice on the presentation or you can look down at yours, each household has a, di a different dynamic. And so we're using customer, non-customer, but in, in your world, we would be student, non-student, okay? So in your world, if someone's a student, we can message to them and say, hey, did you know that we have X going on, if it's something new and additional. If they're a non-student, we could say, hey, Romulus Schools is happening, you know, you need to bring your child here, we have an associate program uh, coming soon. So we have the ability to flip messages by household. Kind of how we're, you can go ahead and let them all roll down. Kind of how we were able to do what we do for the price. We, if you guys get Red Plum, the Red Plum packet in your mailbox, you familiar with it? Um, we have a network that's over, over 60 million households. So what we do, and we're the largest client of the U.S. Postal Service, so you got a good friend on your side. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're able to do in this instance, Macy is the client. We, are, we put the card on top of our shared mail packet so it shares the cost of the postage. So no one, I mean no one, can beat the price that we get for direct mail. So if you see Macy's and Saks flipping the switch, and they all want to save money too, um, Romulus Schools can do the same. Well, a little bit about it is visible. So to the end consumer, a lot of times you've gotten stuff from us, you don't even know where you got it from. In the mailbox, you pull it out, it's just with your mail, it's a direct mail piece. You don't know how it got there, but basically it was delivered by the U.S. Postal Service via our network. Go to the next slide. And you guys, please feel free to ask any questions. How, how it works, it's a bit of saturation here. So we would start the initial targeting by saying, where, is, where are the highest concentration of the pre-K students that you're trying to reach? So we're trying to reach these young families, new moms, and so on, to get them in the early process of learning about Romulus students, or Romulus schools. And so if you guys look a little bit here at the map, a, a, a zip code is broken down into sub-zip codes. Now, from, you know, I live in Wayne. In the area of Wayne, I live, with, live like, if you go two blocks over, it doesn't look the same. So if you think about where you live here in Romulus, each part of Romulus is very different. You have new construction, you have some of the older neighborhoods. Every, 
area has a different dynamic. You have some areas that are filled with seniors, so that may not be a good place where you want to advertise. So what we do is we take an approach, and is in this example, we use ethnicities. So we looked at B1. So the area code, the zip codes are broken down into, you know, like I said, sub zip codes. So if we looked at B1, it has 3,671 households. 39% of those households would have children, or you know, African American, Hispanic, owner occupied, and so on. So whatever dynamic you or the advertiser is looking for, we would look at what zip code makes the most sense. So in your approach, you want to target maybe Belleville students. Let's not mail to all of Belleville. Let's look at certain areas or sub zip codes of Belleville to save money to advertise mm -hmm. to those particular people you're trying to reach. So we make the marketing a little bit more relevant to who you're trying to reach without going over budget. Next slide. Here's, here's kind of how we do what we do. And again, in our world, we deal with a lot of people with databases that says loyal occasional lapse. So in your, in your case, you would say student or a student that may have left or, you know, someone that, you know, might have only been gone a year, someone's been gone a little longer. We have the ability to then message to those people a little differently. So in this case, we say loyal, meaning this person's been loyal to the school district. They've been here. You might want to tell them about a new thing you have going. With the occasional, and I don't know what bucket you might want to put there, but you guys think of who you want to segment, you can message to them differently and so on. If you look at laps, hey, we miss you. We got some new good stuff going on. Mm -hmm. I need to tell you about it. So we allow you the ability to use your data along with our data. You can click there. So this is the part where Velasquez kind of chimes in. Above the dotted line is your data, if you guys have those records of who may have left. And here's our data. With this program, with some of the cards that, and I'll show you the different options, we provide five lists. So five lists could be households with children ages two to four, households with children aged to 12 to 14, if you're looking for the middle school age student and so on. So we provide five lists. We also have lists for Hispanics, uh, single parents, and so on. So you can entice the single mother, which traveling on the road, <laughs> after school care is my best friend, or you know, pre, uh, you know, before school care is another good friend. So you can have the ability to, to specialize, speak to those people. We're not saying, hey, Tiffany, you're a single mother. But the message is so subtle, like it appeals to me, and you have no idea why. And I'm sure you guys have all received advertisement like, huh, how did they know? We may not be blatantly saying that we know this about you, but we do have the ability to give you more relevant message to your, your lifestyle. Okay? Any questions about that? Okay. So here's the good part. How much does this cost? <laughs> So with the basic card, that's 15.5 cents a household. And again, if you guys ever did direct mail, you're not able to touch that. With our basic card, and I think I have some examples somewhere around here. Uh, the basic card is a five by eight. You guys can pass that down. And it's a static message. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> It's a static message, so the, it doesn't change. We don't provide lists with that. It's just a basic card. We will provide the targeting that says, hey, this subzip code is relevant to you. But again, it's a basic card. Every card is the same. Everyone in that subzip code receives the same card, which is perfectly good because if you up front, we're going to do good targeting to say, hey, these are the areas you need to be in. Um, so that's fine too if you want to be more budget conscious. The next card is called a variable message card. And the example up there is for Saks Fifth Avenue. That's their card of choice. And they target people by income. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have a higher income, they'll give you a lower offer. If you have a lower income, and their lower income is not really lower income. <laughs> 
say you're a 70K per person, you know, real low income, uh, they'll give you a higher coupon. But still on the card, they still call out the consumer name. The name on that card is Jessica. So when it still gets to the household, her name is called out on the ad, and she knows it's for her. But she doesn't know they gave her offer based on her income. And here's an example of a message card. I did this one personally for Dixie, Dixie and Target. And you can see how we call out the consumer name and the offer on that piece. Last but not least, I prepared this for Romulus Schools. It's called the Image Card. It is the most expensive card, and here's where I was going with this, guys. I thought because you have so many different goals, you can kind of achieve all of your goals in one drop. So if you're, you're the pre-K mom, and you're the middle school mom, and you're the high school mom, and you're the mom that left the district, within this drop with the variable message card, we can message differently to all of those people. Hold on, let me show you an example. Tiffany, who um, does Blasis provide the design of these cards, or do we have to do the design and submit it, upload it to you? I can. We can definitely do that for you, and we did some mockups here for your. And you'll get some more coming around there. Get back to my mic. The man in charge asked, will we do the design? Yes, we will. <laughs> we will. We would definitely provide that as a service to you and your partnership. I know you guys just don't have graphic folks hanging out. <laughs> but we definitely could do that for you. So in that... And so if you can notice in what we did in the creative mock-up, you can flip the card there. You can go next. And here's on the screen for you all who can't see. If you notice, we did a, a variety of, of cards and message messages. Some was geared towards mm -hmm. young, and I knew that ethnicity is a, a big, important factor here. We don't want anybody, everybody's welcome at Rhymeless Schools, and you wanted to speak to any household that you reach. Uh, and we also, you know, with this ad up here, talked about, you know, people getting into culinary arts or an associate degree. This one at the top was geared more towards the middle school student, like uh, so that, you know, the parent is kind of faced with the choice of, okay, where will I send my child for high school? That's a great time to talk to them again and reaffirm that Rhymeless Schools is the place they need to be. Here again, two other pre-K messages. And again, we have diversity. And I can tell you, this car can get really loaded. Seriously, by your household could receive an African-American ad, your household could receive a Caucasian ad. We can get that detail with our marketing if you would like. And you can use, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No. If you do the designing, we could submit photos of our students, of our programs, and you would use those in your design? Absolutely, we could. Absolutely, we could. And we could work with you on messaging um, you know, to kind of, because I know some of the things that you had did before, you know, I showed it to the creative team, and sometimes you put too much words on the paper, and people, they just don't take it all in. This way, we can kind of do something more innovative and creative, give you guys a fresh look, and, um, you know, to really engage with the, Everybody wants to be entertained now. Like, you know, it's, it's just amazing that you know you can't just send people a type letter anymore it has to be entertaining <laughs> you need to tweet it mm -hmm. you can't you know or you, you can't the days of just the snail mail is just not not what's happening so we could definitely do something to kind of freshen up the look and use your concept this was just an artist taking a stab at it but we could take direction from you 
as to what you would want to do and what programs you would want to highlight. So if you think about it like this, since we're in a school, this is just an algebra problem. So whatever x equals, it triggers a photo or a message. So in your case, if x triggered that you had young children, it would trigger the photo of the young children. If x meant that you had the households with teens, it would trigger that photo. Make sense? You guys have any questions? Is there a, a, a term contract that would need to be done, or is this done by job? We could do it by job. So basically, um, for someone like you, we wouldn't do anything that would be like a long-term commitment or something like that. You could just do that job with us, and, and we would go from there, truly. So attached, and I believe that you passed out a spreadsheet that spreadsheet is pricing. That, that spreadsheet works in conjunction with some maps. Some of you have maps that's kind of tucked in there. So those maps were some zip codes that Ms. Mitchell provided for me. And the maps go in conjunction with the report. So if you look at the highlights on the maps, they would tell you if it's a pre-K home, I mean, you know, sub-zip code, high school sub-zip code. I have some wall maps for your team to get together to actually plan. I can come, I'm local, and be a part of the planning session for you so it could be working. Um, and we could really drill down to some of your goals and exactly where you might want to target. But in that spreadsheet, it provides pricing. And the minimum to this program is 10,000 pieces. So 10,000 pieces, I don't think for the size of the mass of where you're trying to reach of the students, I don't think that's enough. But if you guys wanted to just do a test with 10,000 pieces, you could. So with the basic card, that would be $1,550. With the variable image card, which I uh, made the mock-ups for you, you're looking at $1,990. Less than a quarter of a student. Yep. This man knows how to look at it. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Do you have any more maps on you? I don't have any in my Oh, okay. I will, I will email them to um, I was going to say. Thank you. Did you, did you, Here, you can have this set. Okay. And we First have some wall maps, too. I have a couple there for you all to do you. some planning with. Thank you. You're very welcome. Any other yeah, questions I'll for me? I won't take up more of your time, but I seem like you guys really get the concept of what variable data marketing is and i will tell you that makes you very hip <laughs> yes so does Velasquez work outside of direct mail as well do they do yes other? so can you expound a little bit yep on that? we do we do digital um we also do like what they call preprints. so those are the flyers you get on forgive my back to you guys those are the flyers that you get in the mail or the newspaper we do what they call run of press that is exactly on the newspaper. And with all of our products and services, we offer targeting. So that's the heart of what we do. So if you're trying to reach those students, so we would utilize that through targeting. So on the, online, we even get spookier. <laughs> they literally track the, the, the behaviors of, oh man, man, yeah. We track the behavior, so if we Facebook. know that someone was on your site and then they went over to Belleville's site, if the mom's kind of researching certain things, education and so on, we're able to serve up an ad to that person. So you know how you guys get those ads on the side? My son was looking up at some Adidas shoes, I don't know why. But, you know, he was on my computer, and I kept looking like, why is Adidas bugging me? They just kept like, come on, buy them, buy them, you know. But from that, that, that thing, from that perspective, sometimes the consumer don't, does not click through. Because I'm not a click through person. I usually don't click on those ads. Some people do. But what it causes you to do is have, yeah, it's in your mind. And so it caused me to say, Drew. Were you looking at Adidas shoes? <laughs> like, why are they here? And you know, and so on. He actually, it actually led to a purchase by birthday time. But you know, <laughs> but it, it is here, and it, it's the psyche of the consumer. 
in your case, you know, we call moms and dads, but they're consumers to you. Right. you. You really want them to come and see what you all have to offer. So we do have a wide variety of offerings. My role there is with variable data postcard, but I've sold everything that we have. I'm happy to help you. I want to see you win, Ms. Dr. Daniels, of course. Um, so you let me know what information I can provide to you. I'm happy to give it. I'm sure we have a lot of resources that would help your district. Any other questions? Do you have any business cards? Yes, I do. Sure. Absolutely. Yep, everything's all inclusive. There's some cards. I don't know if I have enough, but I will get more cards here. We'll make sure that I can always share. Yeah, that's right. And I want to thank you for, for your uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, I guess this question is, is more for Dr. Daniels, though. Um, I would imagine uh, short term, there's probably some, some uh, availability within the budget um, for you to exercise administrative discretion if you feel you need to do a marketing plan, which I think, uh, think we all agree. Um, but board members, uh, just be aware that the superintendent may come to us uh, sooner than later and ask for budget resource allocation um, for this type of initiative because we have identified that this is uh, one of our weaknesses and uh, Dr. Daniels has been and her staff uh, including uh, Margie McAnally as well have uh, you know we're, we're uh, using this this partnership that we have with uh, Ms. Hall and uh, they're they're getting a, a very competitive uh, package here and it is something that I think we'll probably do uh, on a more extensive basis later but it's very important that we uh, motivate something for our kindergarten roundup uh, for the early college program the schools of choice I mean there's a myriad of things that this board's already identified so um, I guess that's the question or statement Dr. Daniels is if there's not resource allocation within the budget for you to do this bring it back to us as soon as possible we'll and, and we will consider that. I will do that. Thank you. Did any Thank board members, any anybody else have anything to add? Um, I just had a, a comment. I, I think this is so needed. I've seen lately uh, Wayne Westland has advertisement. They're in the paper. All the school districts, everybody's got advertisement out there and we offer just as much or better mm -hmm. than what they're offering. Mm -hmm. So we need to get some way, I mean, this is, seems like a pretty affordable way for us to try to get what we offer out there. It was interesting because our graphics team is in Connecticut, so they have no idea where Rhymeless, Michigan is. And so what, what it led them to do by the zip codes that you uh, provided us was to go sneak and peek at all of your competitive websites to see what you had to offer and and the the artists this is a really cool place and that was the same reaction i had when i brought my son to the best like this is really cool you know and so you you all are a great kept secret and you need to share with others what you're doing and we can that's our goal strategy and we work with the 100 uh, 98 of the top 100 <coughs> advertisers so I know that we can really help make you powerful and impactful against your competitive people. <laughs> yeah, and I just wanted to add, I know in our um, childhood committee meeting, we have, you know, there's a lot of students that we're trying to target to get to come in preschool that mm -hmm. we're trying to get to come to Romulus. So this is all will be very helpful and even kind of trying to accomplish that. Mm -hmm. I just had a couple of questions, Mr. Perry. Go ahead. Um, in regards to your competition as far as uh, your pricing and, and just, I guess, how you market yourself, sure. um, are there certain things that you do above and beyond what your competition offers? And then I guess I probably need to talk to um, Sherry to find out, are we bidding this particular um, piece out? Have we given other marketing um, companies an opportunity to do a a bid for us or are we moving ahead with with this particular company 
We haven't put a formal bid out. Okay. Um, again, I think the there's been a lot of legwork because of the relationship. I think the first right. step was to bring it here to find out, you know, where we want to go with this. I could see if we were doing a project that was, you know, twenty five, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars. I could see where we might want to do our research and, and give others an opportunity, but um, you know, with the pricing that she was given well, to Well, I know it's a burden. Yeah, <laughs> we absolutely so welcome it. Our, we our absolutely viewers. welcome it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we the, absolutely welcome it. And the postage is, is the big thing. That's yeah. the key. Because nobody else is going to so be able to. let me to tell you the, the, big, the big example here. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just, you know, that's I just wanted no, 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 that, that, is, that is the right thing to absolutely Because that would be their question would be, well, you know, have you done any pricing? Have you done any price comparison for the sake of the budget? No, absolutely. Let me tell you here, the U.S. Postal Service. So they have a program, and you guys can look it up. It's called EDM, and they're the next closest thing to it. So this is the U.S. Postal Service. We are their largest client, but we have this network, okay, that we've had for over 40 years. Well, with theirs, they charge, they just had a postage, postage increase. They charge 14.5 cents just for postage okay. alone. And look it up. No, this is, this is That's healthy. That's the bulk rate. That's, yeah, just for... I'm sure to compare apples to apples. Right. Um, 14.5 cents, and that's the bulk is the cheapest postage you can get because if you go into, you guys know right, the first classes. Right. Yeah. You know the drill. Cent. And so, and that's no targeting. They don't, you have not printed a thing and you have not got creative art services yet. So, you know, again, you know, we could, you could look at our website and look further into what we do. All of the major Lowe's, Home Depot, all of those guys are coming our way because the postage is killing every major business. So okay. this business, Velasquez just got into this business um, two years. And this went from a zero, you know, initiative because we had the, the network to 18 million in one year. So that's just to tell you the wave is coming here because of the cost of postage. It's killing everyone. Mm -hmm. No, it's a great question. Anybody else question? Well, so this would, tar like seniors with no children, this mm -hmm. would know not to send one to them? Yep, so say if you were in that sub-zip code where we have deemed a lot of, um, you know, pre-K or students or people with families in, everyone in that sub-zip code would receive an advertisement, but we could give you something that's called an influencer ad. You may be a grandma or you know, or you might need senior volunteers. We can curtail, so that last bucket would be anybody else, but we try to keep that waste very minimum. We try to go only, only ads uh, to spots that we would have less than five, 10% waste in them. You could call it waste, but. So in other words, they're gonna get a message you would tailor what that message yep. was. We would control so what that message was. The mess seniors would say, you know, come for a spaghetti dinner mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. Monday or Absolutely. Know, something mm -hmm. of that nature. Like, for instance, um, just today at work, we had to do something for Lowe's, and, um, and they only wanted to speak to certain people. They, they still are doing that saturation because it's still cheaper than if they mm -hmm. were to go the direct, direct, direct route. And so they just would send people ad that they didn't want to speak to, I have a nice day. You know, it could be that simple, or you could really utilize that for philanthropic things, or, you know, other goals you might have, you want to get, you know, grandparents Foundation. to read, yep, fundraising, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. You just find a strategy against it, basically. So, and you help us develop what that strategy is. Absolutely, be. yep, yep. I've been in the business for 12 years, believe it or not. <laughs> I started when I was 10. <laughs> and, and oddly enough, my first job was with Inkster Public Schools, so I do, I used to do immunization and pupil accounting and so on, so I do understand the lingo and what you guys are trying to achieve. Um, so I think I could be very helpful and useful. And as well as any client that we sign on, we have marketing resources that become extension of your resources. So, Good. thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank, you, thank so you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate that. Great presentation. Yes. Thank you very much.
and we'll make sure that any of the other information that we need, we'll, we'll get it from you. Absolutely. So that whatever anybody needs, they'll have. Perfect. With that, uh, item number six is the approval of feed, field trips. Um, we can, I think they're separate presented separate? separately, so we probably should do them separately. First one is for the health occupations yes. uh, trip to Midland. I'm sorry, to Traverse, Traverse City. That's Traverse. to Traverse City. Uh, is there a motion for this? Uh, and then we'll discuss. Uh, so moved, Mr. President. Would you like me to read it? I'll read it. Move that the Board of Education approve the proposed trip to Acme, Michigan. Is that the one? Yeah. yeah. Yep. From April 10th. To the 13th, 2013, for the Rama Senior High HOSA students to participate in the HOSA State Conference as proposed. Support. It's been moved by Mrs. Buckley, supported by Mrs. Kraut. Uh, discussion? No. I'm going to uh, say something, if I will, and I'd ask that the superintendent or the business manager um, respond. Um, it's my understanding that we have no extra buses i'm i'm a little concerned at sending a bus to and from traverse city and the wear and tear that that puts on the bus um taking a driver out of district do we have another bus that could do that particular route that that bus would be on and heaven forbid if we have a breakdown um has it been investigated as to chartering a bus and whether CTE funds would be available. I know it says the students would be paying for this. Um. Uh, Mr. President, I, I, what we would have to do, we would need to take a look and see the availability because I understand exactly what your concern is. Uh, one of the things that we'd have to look into, I don't know what the chartering would exactly involve. Um, you know, so I would, I would, yeah, that, that would be the, the, Actually, the portion that I would be clear about. There's not. The only thing in the contract that mentions it is, uh, and it's on page 35 of the contract, uh, item 11, the board is encouraged when feasible to transport students via school buses on trips which are financed by the board and are within a reasonable distance. So that's a matter of interpretation. Go yeah, I, I I just do we have any backup buses if no. one breaks down? No. That's yeah. a yeah. long. Yeah. Well, that uh, <laughs> too. That's for all of them. I mean, we we have buses. We have buses we could send, but will it disrupt the you know the general transportation department for a day? Yes. How much will it? What disrupt? would the impact be? Do you double do you, routes, things of that nature? You know, we'd be doubling up in route to where the driver basically makes a run to the uh, elementary school, drops off students in a location, and goes back and picks up another, you know, busload of students. And we do that yeah. um, when these types of things have ar arise. Typically, those things are closer to home, so the transition is a little bit easier. Um, I'm not even sure if transportation saw this. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and what happens with any if with double routes uh, overtime costs are those it could be, charged to this? It trip could be if that if that driver falls into an overtime category with the number of hours they're already driving. Yes, but it you know I can't say with certainty without knowing who it is and what because driver. this is the way I read the the proposal. <clears throat> it's two round trips. The bus driver it would is. go up, yeah, drop the students stay. off, come back home, and then <laughs> you know on the thirteenth, bless you, uh, go back and right. pick them up. Um, well, the return time is on Saturday, mm -hmm. so it's really just the one day up on the 10th, it looks like to me. Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. So the impact in the schedule. Yes. And it, it could. Is this something the students have paid the transportation costs before, or has that been paid by CTE? CTE. Funds? I think they usually do some fundraising, so they take it out of student activity accounts. So I'm not sure exactly um, when she says students will pay their own expense. I'm not sure if that directly means out of their pocket or through fundraising. I couldn't, I'm not sure with the way this is written. When is it? April 13th. April 10th. Good point. 
Yeah. Um, if the bus driver is going, well, of course, there would probably be a rest period involved because mm -hmm. can they drive 10 miles? 10 in, hours. Or 10 hours? Because it would be a 10 hour round trip. Oh. Or is there break time required for their CDL license? Because by car, it's five hours to act. Yeah, I'd have to check with them, Dot, and see what the regulations on that are. Might, there might have to be X amount of time that they're off the road before they can get back on the road. Mm -hmm. We'll have to look into yeah. it. Yeah. I, I guess my con uh, Mr. City. President. Oh wait, you know what? Did you did you all see the little notes? <laughs> they're handwritten. Um, they're not as dark. They're on the line above source of funding, and it says one bus up spending the night, and then the one, one in the is one up, one up empty, empty spending spend the, night. the night. Oh, that must okay. be to address the, the, the hours the driver. Road. Yep. Okay. I, Mr. President, I guess yes. my concern would be if. If we we're going to start taking these drastic measures, because this directly impacts our students, you know, maybe we should have said something, you know, prior to, so they would know to prepare to try to charter or whatever it is they need to do, because this directly affects each group that we've we've done in past practice of trying to do that. And I understand what our buses look like, so if we're not in danger of, I mean, if we can send our best best bus, like. And we would choose. I mean, no, no, no. no. Best is such a thing? <laughs> Whatever that might be. We are selective yeah. on what we, you know, on what we put on the road. Well, here, here's. I, and I understand. Maybe, I do. I get it. Because I, mean, I know our buses are. Maybe for our next retreat, there should be something we look at into, yeah, uh, like a field trip. Just, uh, it's just right here. More, I guess, of, know, a, of a requirement right that they have to fill out. I no. mean, I don't actually. I mean, well, maybe. And as far as advance notice, I mean, again, this you know, here, notice. this yeah. is the notice they gave us of the trip. We just received this. So the board couldn't have responded any sooner. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm not talking about us responding, but if we were going to just in general practice say, okay, whatever field trips are coming up, you know, you guys need to look at a different way because our buses are not able to. So, like, the board gave us the direction that no out-of-state field trips unless they're chartered buses. Right, or something so, like so that. So that's what we've been operating under, right. under that principle. This but is within state, so it falls outside of that that kind of direction. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, uh, yeah. That's something we need to look at. I mean, right? on this yeah. sheet, there, I mean, obviously it has more transportation. If, if district transportation is needed or private and, and, and you know, policy, and too. So I guess they do address that. Yeah, I, I only raise the concern because I'm, it's you know, I think we're all getting increasingly nervous about our bus fleet, and you know, a a, a five-hour one-way trip, you know, is going to be hard mm -hmm. on some of these buses, and and you know, I I think, you know, taking the concerns that we've heard, I I think you know, probably putting the brakes, pardon the pun, now. Is will probably have unintended consequences that we don't want to have for our students, but I think going forward we all have to have the mindset that you know we really have to protect our fleet so that it's here for our day-to-day -day operations. Um, Mr. President. Um, yes. Um, should we then maybe propose a certain amount of miles traveled as opposed to our first mandate that we talked about out having state, it be state. out of state well because being I, in the I middle of the school year down. i think i think we're we're going to be well i mean stuck it, by it, past it practice kind of, so yeah, yes going go forward after the fact. yeah going Moving forward, forward into the yeah. next budget year yes i i would think that that Change you know policy. maybe listen to the administ have the administration come up with what they think is reasonable and i would almost say within 100 miles but that that's just off the top of my head i don't know how feasible that is but um, that's something for the next budget year's uh, conversation because I would imagine that there's probably going to be several other past practice field trips come before us between now and June. Mm -hmm. And, you know, okay, we're going to be hard pressed if we go for one, how do we not allow the others? Yep. Who's okay. making a decision on what bus? Transportation. Transportation. Does that include a mechanic? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah? I mean, typically they're going to take the bus that's the newest. Right, I mean, but I mean that bus will be a once over by the mechanic yeah. before mm -hmm. you are a transportation mm -hmm. person. Just, okay. Okay. Anything else? No. Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. The motion carries six to one. The next one is the FCCLA state competition. 
Mr. President, I move that the Board of Education approve the proposed field trip for the Romulus High School FCCLA students to Midland, Michigan for the Leadership Conference April 17th to the 19th, 2013 at no cost to the district. Support. It's been moved by Ms. Funderburg, supported by Mrs. Buckley. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Motion carries six to one. Thank you. The next one is, uh, this is in anticipation of our wonderful, we should be getting a score update uh, probably within about an hour if we're still here. Uh, it, this is in anticipation of uh, our basketball team advancing and I uh, advise the administration to go ahead and bring that before us now so we don't, don't end up in a last minute um, situation and I thank you to Ms. Funderburg for bringing it to my attention. Uh, with that, the chair will entertain a motion. Oh, no, no, Mr. President, I move that the Board of Education approve the proposed field trip for the Ramos High School varsity boys basketball team to East Lansing, Michigan on March 22nd, 23rd to compete in the MHSAA state finals and no cost to the district. Support. It's been moved by Mrs. Buckley, supported by Ms. Funderburg. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Nay. Motion carries six and one. Thank you. With that, we'll move into the meat presentation. Dr. Daniels. Um, Anna, can you give me some scissors there? I sure can. As, as you know, we um, have just, well, we just completed the MME testing, but in the fall, we completed the, our meat testing. In the last year, one of the big concerns that we all had, we can go on to the next one in, was the fact that we got new cut scores. You know, they were much more rigorous. And, you know, much to our chagrin, what had been a nice rosy picture suddenly was not. But what the new scores were supposed to reflect was where do our students need to perform in order to, or, or what levels of proficiency, how do they need to score in order to be on track to really be college and career ready. So the scores that you're going to see are going to reflect how our students are doing and in keeping up and keeping on track to be college and career ready. One of the things that um, we find in addition to just how many students were proficient, one of the lenses that we look through in order to see how our students are doing is what is called the growth model. And what we, what the department does, what schools do, what districts do, we not only look at the number of proficient, but how are we moving our students. There are five primary categories. You can either significantly decline, decline, and that means kids are getting worse, maintain, improve, or significantly improved. We do not want our students to be in the categories of neither declining nor significant decline. So what we want to take a look at is, are we being able to maintain and continue to have that improvement and significant improvement? And this is how we fell this year. Um, on the left you see reading, on the right you see the math. This is the percentage of students at those different grade levels who we were able to make sure that they lost no ground, made improvement, and a significant improvement. And if you go on and look at the next one, and this one you did not have included in your original, but this is one where we com are comparing how we were looking last year in our growth to this year. Now, if you'll, if you'll take note, the, the orange or the red-ish color, that's this, the current school year. The, the blue was last year, so you can see how we are moving. Um, the only area where we, where we had a, you know, we kind of backed up a little bit was in the fifth grade, and we went from 68% um, who were progressing forward to only 50% this year. But in all of the other areas in, in reading, you'll find we had significant improvement going from 58 to 73 percent uh, for fourth grade and sixth grade 46 to 57 percent 
in the seventh grade, 44 to 62 percent, and up from 62 to 78 percent in the eighth grade, and this is reading. Now, if you remember last year, we, all, we almost all passed out when we started looking at math scores, you know, where they just totally tanked. But if you take a look at what we've done this year, how everybody just knuckled in and the improvement that we've made, it's absolutely something that we can really say we're, we're moving in the right direction. At the fourth grade, we went from 43% to 63% who were um, maintaining and improving. Fifth grade, 52% to 96% of our students were going forward. 31, in the sixth grade, 31% to 74%. In the seventh grade, 24% to 56%. And in the eighth grade, 25% to 74%. And that's, you know, and you have to know everyone, we, we just, we were keeping going with our reading, but everybody just put, you know, a full court press on trying to stem that flow in the math area and to make some forward progress. And, and this, is what, this is what our result has been. So we're extremely pleased with that. The next um, slides are going to be trend data, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, but I just want to basically give you what the information was and what it looks like. There, when, when, reports, when the MEEP reports come out, they're reported in, in three separate categories. All students, which means all of our students put together, we get a score for those. Students with, ability, with disabilities, they're backed out, and we have a a score for those and then students uh, a group that we look at is all students except those with disabilities so we've either got all students with the bills disabilities or all the students except those with disabilities so Anna if you'll go to the next one so what you see um, the the blue line represents reading and the orange line represents math and across the bottom it's the, four, it's the last four years, how we've done. And one of the things that's important to look at is back in 2009, you know, that was 9 and 10, that was before we started really doing the, the, the tougher, um, um, the more rigor, thank you, the more rigorous scoring. So, you know, you're going to see some ups and downs on them, but if you, if you notice, we're generally moving in the right direction. Now, third grade this year, we had a, 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 a little dip, and that's unusual, because usually the third grade is, is one of our stronger areas. But one of the things, as we look at all of them, one of the things that the buildings are doing, they're taking a look at the scores, they're taking a look at the item analysis to see specifically what are those areas that you know, are causing us some difficulties, and, and everyone is rolling up their sleeves to see what is it that we need to do to continue to go forward. I'm going to basically just kind of give you a, a quick view of what these are so that, the, you know, then you're going to have an opportunity to go back and take a look. Yes. I just have a quick question. Sure. When we say all students, and I know that includes the ones with disabilities, is yes. this strictly in our district or is this because I know that they're including center program students in with our totals now? These are our matched students and I, I don't know that. I don't, think so. I don't know that our, but the, we, we had to, I don't believe our center ones are included in this. No, they yet. didn't. Okay. No. It's not yet. Okay. Yeah, and, and, well, there were a whole lot of agreements that had to be yep. in place for that to happen, and that didn't. Okay. Okay, going <laughs> forward. You'll notice with the third grade, there are only going to be two scores, reading and math, because that's, those are the only two tests that the third graders take. Um, if you notice here, um, with the students with disabilities, they went up in math. We, we dipped in, in reading. But, um, you know, those are some of those things that we're, we're continuing to look at. And again, looking at the item analysis, which specifically talks about specifically what was being tested. At, what, how did we do on this? How did we do on this? That's where we burrow down in and start to really... You know, this is the overview, but that's where the, the, the buildings are going in to look and see what's, what's taking place. Um, this is all students, all students except those with uh, disabilities. But if you keep going, Anna, just kind of 
if you notice here for fourth grade, we've added writing. And the format is going to be the same all the way through, all students, then students with disabilities, and then all students except students with disabilities. The grid at the bottom, or the chart at the bottom, gives you what the actual numbers were so that you can see that. And the, the line graph shows you whether the trajectory was up or down. Um, going forth, you, in, the, in the fifth grade, you see science is added. Um, science went up in some areas and down in others. Social studies in the sixth grade gets added. In the seventh grade, we go back to the reading, writing, and math. So you'll see that. Um, in the eighth grade, in the eighth grade, science is added back in. Now, where we dipped in science in the um, fifth grade, in the eighth grade, we actually, we outpaced the state for science. And that was in the other document that I'd given you before. Okay, and going on, again, the students with disabilities all accept. And then the final one is um, social studies in the ninth grade. So this, this gives what our trend has been over the last four years. Um, we have seen some gains. We still have a, a long way to go. You know, we're not out of the woods yet. But if you look at, the, when we look at the growth model, you know, how we've done, it shows we are moving in the right direction. So if we can continue to do that, you know, our expectation is to be that we will be sitting in a position that we're, we're much more satisfied with, you know, soon. Thank you. The uh, board members, just remember, when you're looking at MEEP scores, you know, we all know this is what's referred to as post-mortem data. It's, right. it's old data. This, this is a year ago, and it's a snapshot that was taken of performance a year ago. And we've got many initiatives in place, including what's going on with the SIG grant, which I think you can see is, is making an impact. So next year's scores are anticipated to be even better. So keep that in mind when you're reviewing the charts, that they, they are a year post-mortem. Anybody have any questions for Dr. Daniels? No? Okay. Next item on the agenda is student reinstatement application. The chair will entertain a motion. Mr. President, before we uh, do the motion, could I? I mean, I just got back from Florida today, and uh, usually in our packets, usually we have this whole um, stuff of what went on with this kid or the student. Um, could we table this? Because I would like to maybe look at that information. Do you want to table it or, or postpone, postpone it? Or postpone it? Uh, absolutely. Um, we can postpone this until the uh, meeting. We have a special meeting on the 18th. Will that give you enough time to review yes. the package? Yes, it will. Um, and board members, you know, I was going to do this later, but I can do it now since, since the conversation came up to explain why past practice was changed. Um, there's been considerable discussion at the board table about um, reinstatement process and documentation that's in the packets. And what the, the, we're trying to err on the side of caution because we have, we are required to take any and all steps necessary to protect the confidentiality of the student. And if, when the committee, which the board does have a committee, or I'm sorry, the district has a committee of which two board members are invited to sit in on, um, for reinstatements, those committee members do not get the packets to take home either um, for the confidentiality concerns. They come, they look at the packet, they talk about it, they make a recommendation to the board. Um, the intention was to extrapolate that practice on and not have us get the entire packet. Uh, and board members could then come and review the packet here at the administrative office. But any personal identifiable information in that packet should not uh, be in a situation where it could be distributed. Uh, I did discuss this with MASB. I had sent them an email 
and I actually brought a copy of it with me. It's somewhere in this mess, um, where the concern is under FERPA, um, and that's the federal yeah, education, yeah. the family. family it's yeah. it's family privacy, and it's that's where we use the the seven or nine digit student number to identify the student, and that's why your agenda only has the student number on it. Any discussion about, any public discussion, I'm sorry, about, and that includes in, in open session, about whether the student is or isn't a special ed student, whether the student does or doesn't take art, anything that could identify that student is inappropriate conversation. And this was, a, the movement was, the, the decision to not send those packets home was not meant to keep any board members from receiving information prior to you being asked to vote on something. It was to say we need to respect the confidentiality of the process and there are plenty of copies that were used for the committee purposes that uh, the superintendent's office would have available for somebody to come and review prior to the meeting. It was not and is not the intent that those packets would leave this building. But if there's someone that feels they need to take it home and study, you know, I, I'm not going to dance. I, I'm just explaining to you why that was done, what the motivation was behind it. It was nothing nefarious. There, there, was, there was nothing dastardly schemed. It was just... I'm concerned about the confidentiality of the student and protecting the students, and we have to take any steps necessary to do that. Yeah, I mean, I have no problem coming here and spending an hour or so and, and reviewing it and not leaving the building. I was just curious why we didn't have it, uh, because, you know, without knowing even the, the reason why, you know, if this was an assault, if this was a drug, if this was just somebody, you know, I don't know the reason. So to me, uh, I, I guess um, I have a question. Uh, let me see how I can phrase this. Because to me, I guess when it comes to me in, f like in this matter, I, I have a feeling that I have that right to overturn it because I'm thinking, mm -hmm. do I want this child around my child or any other child doing what he did? Exactly. So I, I have that option of overturning this committee's recommendation or not. If, if they say, I want this kid, this student reinstated, I could say, well, what was the violation? I don't want him around my child. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess... Um, I always notice we have different people on these committees. Does it have to go through the, the Board of Education or the, um, the, the body here of a reinstatement? Or could we have the same people on a reinstatement committee, like the same seven people, and they're well-trained to, to handle this, and then never has to come to us unless it's an appeal by a parent, and their decision's final? To me, that'd be like a jury thing, I guess. Whereas, because, I mean, without all that documenta you know, documentation of a police yeah. reporter or this, like I said, I can't make my decision because it feels like I have that right to overturn this now as a board member. Well, and you do. Right. And that's, to use your example, that committee, the, the reason, the main reason it's different board members is based on who's available. Right. Uh, that's what the whole and committee. the whole purpose right. of it coming to the board is the committee makes a recommendation, but the board is the final hearing panel. Okay. I don't know that I would ever recommend that the board totally subrogate its authority to a committee to make a, a final determination without us having, um, you know, a veto power, so to speak, um, because board members certainly have uh, the, the, the prerogative to vote in favor or against uh, uh, recommendations of the committee. But as you said, but, but you then need again, to have time a, to bias, review the packet. There's a bias thing, too. I mean, I, obviously, a parent come in front of the board and you say, oh, God, I went to high school with that guy, and that's his kid I'm going to kick out. I can't do that. Well, so, I mean, so where's the fair? I mean, there's a, uh, I think, uh, challenges your um, ethics, I think. Absolutely. You mean if you're in, on the committee? Yeah. You know oh, even if, no, in front of the board, even. Because oh, yeah. a lot of times, if I, if I know the person the that, I, I won't even sit on it right. if I know them, because a lot of times I know, like, 99%. But you know them when they come in front of us on the board begging for their mm -hmm. student to come back in. You so say, oh, God, that's my neighbor, and that's the kid. How am I going to live with this neighbor? That's why we have to be able out. to put that on the shelf. Right, but I don't and know. And that's what, you know, and I, I've that's been in that situation so many times, John, but I just have to look at right. the I mean, information I, I, that's put before me and then try to make the best decision that right. I can. 
So yeah, you're going to be put in that position. Can we receive the information with all the identifiers? Yeah, like highlight out? it out or something? A redacted report? Yeah. Without names and, you know, just. Numbers. I mean, you would only have to do that to what, one copy and then recopy it all. Yeah. I mean, that might be the violation a and, you know, maybe past all problems. All names would have to be removed from it. All names and all references, and, and yeah, right. that's where we start to get into some right. well, right. yeah. issues. Yeah. Because yeah. one person says, well, I can identify that based on this information, whereas the person that's redacting doesn't realize there's a correlation. Right. Yeah. But right. once again, I have no problem no, just coming I, in here, leaving the information right. here if I can problem. review it. Well, so I just need to make a. Yeah. 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 I, I just need, I make a fair I need my information my judgment. Yeah, e exactly. Did you have something you wanted to add? Because I know Ms. Bowles, you have something. Just well, I had mentioned to Dr. Yeah. Daniels that um, the board approves expulsions, or the board mm -hmm. make, takes board action on expulsions. So, so the board out. has to take board action on reinstatement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just like I said, I, to make a fair judgment for this student, I just need to look at and all the but students around him that it could affect. Mr. President, and I'm guess I'm hearing a couple of different things, and just so that I can, I'm clear on what it is. Are we talking about the for confidentiality purposes, the packet isn't coming home, or are we? I, I guess I'm I'm starting to get a little confused because I'm hearing two different conversations that are are going on. I was under the impression that the what we receive as far as it, the student packet portion is going to remain at the board office for board members who, if we have a reinstatement, they can come in at their leisure to review those packets or a few minutes before or whenever to review for the sake of that information still remaining here. Because, you know, and, and just kind of speaking for myself, I've always felt a bit uncomfortable having that type of information in my own household. Not that I don't trust the people that I live with, but you, some people don't have access to shredders or being able to properly um, dispose of this type of, of personal information. And so I can totally understand where what it is that you're talking about in the issue and the fact that we we give that type of courtesy to our employees why wouldn't we give it to our students as well so um, I, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not hearing too different that there's not opposed to us having access to the student packet It's just more of less when are we going to have the opportunity as board members to Please. review that particular information so Absolutely, and, and I would say that those packets would be available if, as soon as they were placed on the agenda. The super and we were notified that there was an agenda item. The superintendent's office would have copies available for review. Okay, Mrs. Bolts, yes. Um, personally, I would request specifically to have the information on hand so that I can research it in depth. Uh, personally, there's times that I may not actually be able to come here to actually be able to sit so I'm personally would I like the idea of having the information I feel like the citizens have elected us as board members they trust us and because they do have the trust we have a responsibility and and that's that's really pretty much the bottom line we have a responsibility if there's any threat in your household as in someone else having that information it is still your responsibility as a board member to make sure that you protect that information that is your job. So personally, to me, I feel I need the information to be able to go in depth and to be able to research it on a deeper level. I just want to, and, and that's fine, but I just want to mm -hmm. ask you what you mean by research. Actually, you look over the You want to read the pocket? I want to read it. I want to look over it. If I need to compare information, I want to be able to do that. I would like to get the information in an adequate time amount where I may even be able to contact the interim superintendent and ask them, I need further information. I need you to explain specific things on me. There's times I may come in, she may not be available at that time. So with that, I want to make sure that I cover all ends. And also as well, Mr. President, if I have any questions, I want to make sure I have adequate enough time to be able to contact you or any other board member in regards to a specific issue. Absolutely. I just want to make sure that you understand that when it comes to expulsions, there's no research. We are required to only look at the record in front of us. I understand so that. But if I need 
adequate more information that's fine i can do that and And i can also compare information if i need to to just make sure that everything is being judged fairly because i don't want anything to come back on this board for any reason and the only way to do that is to cover all rounds i mean i think that packet's pretty full i mean that's what i said there's this pat the past history of that student and and any letters uh any police reports which is exactly why it needs to be but that's, that's the same thing, all costs, you know, I agree because it's I, their I, academic record, it's right. their right. attendance right. records. Mm-hmm. So Sometimes right. it's social services records mm-hmm. that involve the parents right. and involves other children that may not be involved in that instance. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I would just, you know, I'll make this statement and then we'll move on. If board members can want to come here and review it, they can. If they want a packet sent to them, I'm going to ask that you request the packet in writing. Right. And if the information gets out and it's traceable, woe on that board member. That's right. Yeah. Because, I mean, the way it sits right now, I have no idea what this mm-hmm. student did. Mm-hmm. And then if I vote yes for this and it right. was an assault charge with a weapon, right. <laughs> exactly. silly me. Exactly. And, and it'll so, be on next Monday's uh, agenda. Would that fit into our time frame? It was proponent. I'm yeah. just asking. I mean, we, we can't anyway because, I mean, does it fit into our time frame? Of, oh, don't well, we have a, do we have a problem don't we have a number of days from the hearing? That's what I'm asking. Don't, it's usually the next board meeting. Right. The next board meeting or the next regular? Next regular. They say next regular board meeting. Well, then so then we still week. have time. We still have time then. Yeah. Okay. We still have time to uh, because our regular meeting would be the 25th. So the 18th is, is still within that time. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're good. And, and I know we got I'll deadlines. We got dates. And look at it. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Okay. Thank you. With that, we'll go to the fun part of the meeting. Yes. Oh. Ms. Papazoglou and the uh, amended 1213 budget. No, we'll just use uh, because it's no better. Uh, uh, All right. One and I mean, pass them down. We 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 have this. Didn't we already have this? Yeah. No. The presentation no. you did not. No. no. We just had oh. the numbers. Oh. Uh, it looks similar, probably. probably. <laughs> if you knew how many PowerPoints I've looked at in the last week. Yeah, and I don't change my presentation slide. It's just a lot of work. Cartoon. So, <laughs> I, I should get a little funnier. So we're here to talk about the update. The last time we spoke about budget, technically at a board meeting, was in November. I believe it was around the 25th or so. And so I'm here to provide you with updated information uh, between what's happened from then until now and uh, where we go from here through uh, June 2013. So what I provided on this slide, basically, uh, basic information. What was the beginning fund balance, revenues, expenditures, you know, are we in a surplus or deficit for the particular year? The expected ending fund balance, what's the assigned fund balance, and what's the change in the amount? The very first column was that a November 26th update I provided you. And at that time, we were looking at an $855,000 deficit. And remember, I'm going to take you back in to June of 2012 when we adopted our budget. We were hoping to have about $44,000 in fund balance. And when we got all of our student enrollment numbers, you remember those, (laughs) um, our numbers were a little bit lower than we ever projected, than we projected, um, unfortunately, which really threw us into this um, negative fund balance um, prediction. And so what we're looking at today are really the last two columns, the revised budget as it stands today. The first um, March 11th uh, budget includes the sale of property. We've been talking about that for a very long time. And the last one includes what the budget looks like if we remove the sale of property. And that's going to be a discussion that we need to have tonight. Um, There's also some information on a parcel of that property being sold, and we'll talk about that in in a few minutes, too, on a later agenda item. But, you know, I have to bring this to your attention because the window of time between now and June is not that long. um, To So the risk that we're taking, including this, is that are we really going to... Is that going to come f- to fruition? Are we really going to sell all that property? Now, that property has been on the market since around March 16th of 2012. So we're coming up on a year, very shortly. Um, so you know, think about this for a minute. Again, 
We've done a little better if we keep the, the second column there for numbers. Um, from 855,000 of us on assigned balance, we're down to 806. So our trend in that area is well. As you know, we cons a budget, I, I budget very conservatively from the beginning of the year. And I'll give you some more information because I really think that $800,000 number is still a little high and I'll give you my predictions why. Um, but I hate to put those numbers into stone because I'm not 100% that those trends will continue to, to um, forecast between now and June. So then the next slide is again what has changed. Real basic, um, you can see there really wasn't much movement. The increase in revenue was about $352,000. Um, we were involved in a class action settlement, which I didn't know about until about six months ago. Um, and then what was great is they sent a check for $93,000. So I said, well, we'll take that. Um, so that was one piece. And then we received additional SIG um, grant money and then some carryover money from the 11-12 um, year was finally allocated to us and we were able to budget that. So about 258000 of revenue. And then in terms of uh, expenses, as you know, I say it all the time, what we receive in expend or grant revenue, we spend in grant mon money. So those are always equal. And we had some retirements. You're fully aware of several retirements that we've had in the district. And there are clauses in contracts that the district is held to. And um, you know that's not just one person. That's several people that we've had to um, come to fruition about making payments out. So again, the increase in the fund balance is about $48,000. Again, still in the hole about 800 and some thousand. The next slide is virtually the same. The only piece of information that's different is you can see in the decrease in revenue, if we eliminate that second line, the sale of property, that's the value of five pieces of property that we have on the market. And again, what does that do to the fund balance? Next slide. Uh, I usually use this slide because it's um, for people to see <laughs> what a drastic change um, we've had over the course of the last several years. But the yellow line really represents fund balance. And you can see in 09, 010, we were having a great year. And then since then, things have gone downhill. Um, you know, the district has done its due diligence in cutting funds. We've, uh, since I've been here in 05, 06, um, the district has cut pretty much every single year. And, um, you know, we've tried to to defeat this curve and all the things that are going on in Lansing, but um, it's to the point now where it's heading, we're heading in a different direction. So that's what it would look like with the sale of property. And the next slide shows you where it's at without. The next slide are things that I'm gonna continue to watch from now until the end of June. We'll meet, um, the last regular board meeting in June will be when you'll adapt um, your re final revised 12-13 budget and you'll actually, um, adapt your 13-14 budget. I'm still waiting for the grand recap from the city of Rimelis. It actually gives me the actual tax revenue that they collected. And on that, uh, there will be delinquent property taxes as usual. The county will make 100% collection or make us whole for 100% of the real property. <coughs> and the city of Rimelis is responsible for collecting the personal property tax on delinquent. And we get that over the course of the year when they collect it. If there's any major Michigan tax tribunal cases, that should say MTT, not MMT. And then we'll get a county tax settlement invoice. And so that's a big piece of the puzzle, although I don't see any drastic changes there. It's just something I want to make you aware of. We do not have the grand recap yet, but it's coming any day. Medicaid, um, we do have about $150,000 anticipated revenue in Medicaid, and we've received a small amount of funding, and typically between now and June, we get a larger piece. So I think I've underfunded that revenue, but again, I don't want to commit to that. And let's talk about some of the trends that would make that $800,000, about $400,000 less. So what I'm saying to you is that I have about $400,000 in expenditures in the budget right now that I think we won't need. And those are in the areas of health insurance, I think about 336,000 I have over budgeted in the, in the um, budget. But the trend right now is that we would end the year with those funds available to be put into the fund balance. Unemployment, about 36,000. Workers' comp is trending about $18,000 better than we expected. Substitutes is an area where it's really difficult um, because we just don't know in some cases who's going to be out, and it's hard to predict. So we always use years past, and that's what we've done here. And then, of course, utilities and repairs and maintenance. We estimate higher than we typically would and hope for the best. Just to re refresh your memory on sale of properties, again, we listed those in March of 2012. We have five parcels, two with buildings, three with land only. There's the estimated value. 
and we'll continue to market to buyers. We have a potential interest right now, one of the pieces of property, and it's going to be an agenda item discussed later in the meeting. So here's where the difficult part comes in. Tonight, you're going to have to adopt a deficit budget, whether it be 850 some thousand or two, over two million. <coughs> what happens next is I need to contact the Michigan Department of Education and alert them to the status of our potential deficit. I then will need to create a deficit elimination plan. I have 30 days from tomorrow to complete that and submit it for review to the MDE. There's potential interruption of state aid if, if all the uh, requirements are not met. And the first requirement, again, is to submit it in 30 days. The MDE has a chance to review it. If there's more information that they need, they turn that back around to the district and they have another two weeks to respond. Typically, if you follow the regulations, your state aid is not interrupted. And that's what we're going to do here in Romulus. The expectation, the law, basically says that the deficit will be eliminated within two years of inception. But you can uh, uh, get a waiver from the state's superintendent of pu public instruction that um, you need three more additional years. But that has to be upon their approval. So the anticipation is that, or the expectation is that you will complete it in two years, but there is a clause that you can get a waiver for three years if it's approved by the superintendent of the state. Up to three years. Yes. Again, the MDE approves the uh, plan, and then the district would be responsible for submitting monthly budget control reports just to keep them up to date. And as well, you would get those as well, because I'm sure you're going to want to know where we stand in a, in a particular month. So I put together a timeline um, on what's to be expected for the next several weeks. And so this week, uh, after this is adopted, whichever path you choose, um, we'll have an administrative review of the 13-14 budget. I have a preliminary one. I'm still working on that, but it should be finalized by tomorrow, end of day. And we will start to, we will begin to create a potential budget reduction list like we have in the past. March 18th, we've already determined that we're going to have a special meeting for other purposes, but this would be on it as well. We will review that preliminary 13-14 budget with the Board of Education, and we will provide you with a recommended list of reductions for um, the Board of Education, the recommended list from the administration team. Have a discussion. I'm sure you may have some thoughts yourself as board members. We are also going to ask our administrative staff to weigh in on some suggestions, as well as potentially some of our unions. During the week of the 25th through the 29th, if we need to, which I probably think we will, we will con continue to review that recommended list of recommendations and then determine when we will, um, if it's ready to go to the state of Michigan for a, or the Department of Education for a final um, review. So my hope is to get it in early. I know that sounds crazy, um, but I'd like to get this moving on in case we come into some issues with it. We have some more time to fix those issues. Um, and it will be submitted by me. Any questions on that? I have two um, before we get started. Uh, the first one on that on your timeline. Um, I know you know that we can't you know we don't have a crystal ball here. We have a board meeting on the 25th. Are you saying that we may need a special meeting? Because the 29th is Good Friday, so that would have to be the 28th. Yeah. Yes. You may need a special meeting. I'm thinking we will. I don't see us coming to conclusion on these issues at, on the 18th and then the 25th. I'm okay. thinking that we're probably going to need another chance to talk. Again, we have to see how those discussions go when we meet on the 18th. But I think, board members, it might be wise if we pencil in the 28th I would agree. As, as a special meeting. Uh, I would agree. 6 p.m., you know, and get that on our calendars just to be safe and if we don't need it it's it's easier to cancel the 28th it's a thursday i recognize it's that's an off night and i hope it's not too much of an inconvenience but we want to make sure that sherry is able to uh, do that um yeah, before I, I we get into date. i'm sorry i won't be able to make that date okay i'm but i'm sure you'll communicate with sherry mm -hmm. paula or myself any concerns questions yeah. and comments that you six have six yes um I do have one question, but before I get to that and before we go through board member questions, um, I want to thank Sherry, Dr. Daniels, and the rest of the administrative team. I know the enormous burden that this is placing 
on our administrative team. And I ask all of us to keep that in mind because we're just getting a hold of what this picture looks like and the whole 30-day deficit elimination plan window. Um, there's an enormous workload that's going to happen over the next 30 days. So I'm going to ask you to be patient and to be flexible. Thank you. Thank you. With that, there, there is one question that did come up um, in your spreadsheet that was with, you know, that came in our packets. The, there's a pretty remarkable jump between the November and the revised budget in instructional staff. Yes. That's all related to the grants. That's what I thought. Instructional, um, let me open it up real quick here. Is that the additional yes, SIG it's grants the SIG. that we? Yes, it is. And the carryover funds. Um, okay. Most of the SIG, a majority of the SIG funds that are being used are being used in a, in a function we call 221, and that's for improvement of instruction, as well as Title IIA carryover. If there were any funds in that area, it all goes to 221, so that's why. Okay. I just didn't want to put any board nope, members. I have my notes because I knew that. that. <laughs> so, I knew that know, would come up. It, it got funneled to me, so. Okay, uh, uh, does so anybody have any questions? So the big question is, um, for me, you, you, know, you have a document in front of you and you need to decide tonight which lane we're going to pick. Both of them are not good news. One is worse than the other. Um, I guess I have to ask oh, what the board... to the property? Yes, I have to ask what your pleasure is because I have to alert the state. I, and board members, you can, you can chime in on this, but the board basically listed those properties for this budget year they're still on the market till june 30. Okay. i think the question becomes do we continue that into the next budget year right. keeping in mind what yes. you said what is the likelihood yes. of us selling those when we use this as a budget band-aid mm -hmm. especially now that we're in the debt situation we need to be able to demonstrate that there's a reasonable assurance we're going to sell those mm -hmm. so but uh, what our board members thought we'll handle the property thing okay. that question mm -hmm. first can we change realtors I mean we could change realtors um, you know if you remember back when I did put an RFP out for realtor services or appraisal services I should say at the time um, for you know to make it fair and equitable among vendors and I got no response then the only reason um, that we ended up with Signature Associates is because they have experience, they had experience with Wayne we Westland, they're still working with them, and they have and have experience with River Rouge. And I <coughs> would just chime into that, Mrs. Kraut, that you know, Signature is actually Very. marketing the, the properties. We had a difference in <laughs> philosophy with yeah. prior administrators that did not. I'm trying to be tactful. That was the breakdown. Since the board reasserted and said we absolutely want those properties marketed, that's they have what they that. do. There, there's discussions about some of the others, but nothing has formalized into an offer except for the one that we're going to talk about in a little while. If that helps. You. Remember, they have a vested interest in this as well. Because yeah. I'm just wondering if they're marketing like to churches and stuff. Because today. Um, I mean, we're not going to need the two schools we actually two schools we have. We may be wanting to actually, look, you know, close another one. So um, I'm just wondering if if they're really looking mm -hmm. where the possibility for people that would be in the market to buy mm -hmm. versus another school. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, other schools are having the same problems as us because yeah. of the academy schools. Yeah, we're we've had other interest and in those with uh, properties on them. We've had tours through the buildings, um, but it did not lead to an offer on the table. So we're getting the calls. We are getting calls. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I, that make, might make you feel a little better. It does. Okay. I would say, um, Rob, I, I think you hit it on the head. I think we we have them out, and we should keep them for this budget because that's what we said we were going to do. Mm -hmm. And going forward, we need to see if it makes sense. But if we have something on the table now, then it seems like we're actively yeah. getting um, interest in the property so I mean it might be feasible to keep them so I don't see it could happen it off. I mean it could happen yeah mm -hmm. okay I agree I have a question yes. 
Um, just can you go a little bit more in detail about the instructional yes. grant and, yes, yes, yes. and how that carries over? So hopefully I can do this briefly. Uh, this basically is the way that the state requires it to be summarized, okay. a budget to be summarized, and um, it's the way that we are re uh, required to report it, uh, financial information database to the state of Michigan, so that all st school districts look the same when you're looking at their budget in terms of the descriptions. Instruction means basic programs are your everyday teachers, your first grade, your kindergarten, all the way through high school. Added needs, sorry about that, added needs are like your compensatory Teachers, if you had special re reading teachers and things of that nature that are actually in the classroom with the teachers, that would fit that category. And adult ed is adult ed. Okay. Once you get down to pupil services, it's those services that are outside of the classroom, but important to the instructional base. Okay. Pupil services, um, the first one would be counselors, um, psychologists, things of that nature. They are, you know, that are um, serving students, but not in the classroom. Instructional staff. You've got uh, library, media text, curriculum. I kind of listed those there because that's really an area where people have the most questions. But staff PD is a big one. A lot of our grants, uh, 2A is predominantly a 221 grant, which means it's spent all on improvement of instructions. It's not spent on students. It's spent with um, that. Those funds are spent on staff to improve the instructional practices that they use every day. Um, and, and in general, the reason that went up is because SIG, um, we got 200 and some thousand dollars. Uh, additional funds. General administration is what it is. General administration, which is the Board of Education, um, insurance, things of that nature. School administration are principals, assistant principals, and costs that are related to that. Business is my office, as well as some of our insurance premiums, not health insurance, property insurance. Maintenance and operations, I think, speaks for itself. Pupil transportation speaks for itself. Central office, I've listed those there. That's anything related to curriculum, HR, and technology. And then, of course, athletics. Community services and parent involvement in IDC, which is indirect cost. Parent involvement, we are required in most cases and in most of our grants, especially Title I, to provide an X amount of percentage to parent Im involvement. Let's try to get the parents in so that um, assistance can be had by the students. Indirect cost is another um, line item in grants where you don't specifically say how you're going to spend it, but they allow you to, per, let's per se, 5% has to be put away for indirect cost, or can be, I should say. And then capital outlay is capital expenditures that are over $5,000 each. Okay. So it would have to be a big truck or things of that nature. Okay. In this case, it was a bulk purchase of computers that we install over the summer. Did that answer your question? Um, yes, it answers. you're still writing, so. Purchases of computers. Okay. Yes. Now so that could be buses if we were buying buses or trucks. Okay, with the purchases of computers, what did you do with, or what did we do? With the old ones? With the old mm -hmm. The old ones are, um, I don't know if they're in this warehouse or they're at the Mount Pleasant Center, but those have basically been allotted or um, the board has declared those surplus. And so we are determining how to get rid of those right now. Do they have software on them already? Have they been Oh, cleaned? I'm sure that there's software. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there a login that you have to do structure to log into it? I'm sure or at the time they were being used that there was. Okay. Mm -hmm. Has all that been? Well, that what usually happens in a computer in a case like that, the computer is wiped out. So there's really nothing on the computer. I mean, they would even have to install their own operating system because we had the license for that operating system. Okay. But we can still sell those for parts. Yes, yes, we can. Very good point. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's typically what happens. Okay. They want the shell of a monitor, or you know, all the pieces inside of the CPU. Yeah, that, and that's what um, several months ago, uh, Mr. Thie and I had toured Mount mm -hmm. Pleasant, and, and the administration is researching. There's some different companies, jobbers or mm -hmm. auction companies that will come out. And they're going to be getting some information probably in the, sometime in the spring. Actually, we just spoke to them last everything. week. Yeah. And so we're it's setting up coming. an appointment okay. for them so to come. We're moving, we're moving as fast as we can on that before, yeah. before we have many more break-ins and stuff yes. get damaged. Well, it's, it's on the table again because they contacted us last week. And I told Mr. Morris to move forward with making an appointment <sighs> for them to go through. Does that help, Tamika? It's false. Um. Yeah, it does. I'm just really trying to figure out, even with the computer, I know, like, is there a, are these computer are computers that are just not compatible anymore? Would, would yes. you happen to know the operating system? I that don't was on know. It? And each of them, I couldn't tell you. Okay. Okay. 
Most of those are computers that were used in our kayak labs. So they're really those are still good computers, and I'm thinking a lot of those computers may still be able to have, mm -hmm. you might not be able to necessarily, of course, sell them for a complete right. amount, but mm -hmm. you can, some people can't buy mm -hmm. new computers, and that would be a great right. way to offer that to mm -hmm. some of the parents for a nice discount and, and sell it at a cheap, cheap rate, and it's so much cheaper to go buy an operating system and to install that on it than for it is to go and buy a whole computer for the updated year. So we'll I was just thinking that. about well, that. We'll that. That's why we went over to Mount Pleasant to see what was uh, mm -hmm. keepable yeah. and, or even offer, like even do a, a, a yard, a flea market type yeah. deal for yeah. the public to come in. Yeah. But we're, like I said, we're still waiting. Uh, and a lot of those computers, they scavenge them yes. for parts. For we do. Break it into we do. I mean, okay. absolutely. The properties. Okay. Well, but they are even cannibalized before they even get to right. the warehouse for different parts for to parts. keep the ones that Keyboards, we have in our mice. buildings operable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I said SIM so cards. It may be missing a SIM card or. Okay. I mean, I would hope in the month of April, maybe late April, we'll Monitor. probably have some better information for you. Yeah. Okay. On that. Okay. Any other questions on the budget for Sherry? Um, if not, the chair will entertain a motion on the amended budget. Did we decide on which way we're going? That's what you needed, right? We, I Before believe we did. Properties. I thought I heard you say to include the properties. Yeah, okay. with the sale of properties. Okay. Yeah. Everybody looks good. So it's just so that I'm clear, I'm sorry. One more no thing. Problem. One mm -hmm. more thing. I'm sorry. Um, in regards to this, this particular property, is this the only – how many – can you tell us how many offers we've had on there and how what's the expand of For, it being on the market? Now are we ta so right now we're talking about all of the properties. Are you talking about a very specific one? Are you talking about the property that's on the agenda for later discussion? Yes, can we wait mm -hmm. can we can we wait and discuss that yeah. then? Okay. Yeah. There are five properties for sale. I can tell you there's only one formal offer. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's all there has been because had there been any others we would have brought them, you yes. know, to the board immediately cuz we want their check. Okay. But our understanding is there's people calling, going yes. through, but they're mm -hmm. not making an offer. Absolutely. So yeah. they're touring the properties, they're, but yes. they're not they putting it off around the Correct. table. Okay. Whether they're delaying These, their decisions or decided not. Maybe wants to buy it. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. Okay. So again, the, the, the chair would entertain the motion, and the, the motion would be on the uh, budget including With the sale. sale of property as presented. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board of Education adopt the amended 2012-2013 general fund budget um, with the sale of property. Support. It's been moved by Ms. Funderburg, supported by Ms. Buckley. Um, Sherry, I think if it's okay with the maker and the seconder of the motion to include in the motion that it projects a negative fund balance of eight hundred six thousand seven and four that's very wise because we need mm -hmm. to we need to acknowledge that okay we're we're in the deficit situation if that's okay with the maker no that's fine do you want me to say that well no i just okay. kind of said it so anna will okay. type it okay. eight hundred six thousand seven hundred four dollar deficit any further questions hearing none all those in favor please signify by saying aye aye those opposed Unfortunately, we have a deficit budget. Thank you. Thank you. Are we ready? It Ms. is. Pop. Welcome to us and 60 other, 60 percent. Yeah, of you know that's a good point. If you go out, on, <laughs> if you go out on the MDE's website, there is a section about deficits, and you would be able to actually see the paperwork that I'm going to have to complete to go to the state. I can't give you the exact um, address, but it's not hard to find, Ms. Bowles. Um, but you can also get a lot of information about who is already in our position and the progress other districts have made or not made. Um, so, you know, if you have a free couple free minutes, you can go out to the state's website again. It's on the deficit elimination plan. It's easy to find. If you just Google deficit it's elimination plan money. for MDE, you'll find it. Okay. Sherry, I'm confident you will guide us through this. Yes. Well, thank you. I'm confident that you will. Okay, with that, we'll move into the redesign committee report. Give Sherry a little break here. Me too. Sorry, board members, do you need a, do we need a break? Okay. Just figured I'd mention. 
a bladder the size of Texas. <laughs> Yes. So um, we're going to do a district redesign administration recommendations presentation for you tonight. This is the culminating event for us as far as the redesign committee that the board asked us to form. So if you'll just bear with me for a moment, I know everybody up at the table knows this, but obviously this is for our viewing audience as well. Um, I want to just do a little bit of, of background on the, the, the formation of the district redesign. Because we had declining enrollment, the economic times are as what they are, um, this Board of Education asks, asks the administration of this district to um, form a redesign committee that is made up of school community, and community stakeholders so that they could give us input I as to what they would like to see our district become. So, so that was the charge that was given to us. You asked us to focus on two things, on how to meet the needs of our smaller school age population and how to add value and increase opportunities for children. So those were the two, two big tasks that we had. The committee was formed. There were 28 members of this committee. The members included board members, uh, school administration, as well as board office administration. Sherry and I were the co-facilitators of the redesign committee. We had teachers, we had parents. We had city government members uh, participating on this committee actively, and we also had union leadership. We had an excellent cross-section. All schools were represented. We, had, um, we met five times as a whole committee. So um, I'll get to that in a minute. We, we created some subcommittees that met several times um, in between our whole committee times. But as a whole, we met five times. The subcommittees that were formed the very first day of the redesign committee, we did an activity where we said, okay, we, gotta, we have to eat this elephant. <laughs> and we all know to eat an elephant, you take one bite at a time. So we, we did a little activity that kind of broke it up into natural areas. And the three subcommittees that were formed as a result of that activity were subcommittees that would focus on, one, learning configurations and facilities, two, value add, and three, public relations. Each committee, uh, subcommittee discussed, and, and I can say I was part of at least two of the heated debate meetings, <laughs> um, several ideas. There were so many ideas that were flowing through. Great ideas, some were high in the sky, but we still put them out there to see if we could flush anything out that we could reasonably come to you today on. The process that we used, the subcommittees discussed and debated ideas that were relative to that subcommittee's area of view. We had some overlap, you know, we, we dealt with that. But that was, that was the, the process that we used in the subcommittees. Those ideas that the subcommittees came forward with, they got consensus as to what they wanted to present to the whole committee. That which, so they would come forward to the whole committee for consideration and we would get some direction at that point at each subcommittee level and then go back into our sessions, our, our additional meetings. The whole committee then made a recommendation to the Romulus Central Office Administration who then took those recommendations under advisement for today's recommendation to the Board of Education. So I don't want, I don't want to dismiss that there was, you're going to get three slides basically of recommendations, mm -hmm. but I can tell you that if I put everything out there, <laughs> you would have hundreds and hundreds of slides and ideas to, to, to funnel through. So the recommendations right now from administration to the Board of Education with regarding redesign for 13-14 school year the first uh, com subcommittee or fir first group is the learning configurations and facilities recommendation. This administration is recommending that we maintain four elementary schools for the 2013-14 school year. The budget implication on that, and we tried to put a bu budget implication for everything because everything goes back to the budget. Um, it's our opinion that the district will save $900,000 in general fund savings if we continue on with four elementary schools this year then you can, we can take it all the way to a cost neutral impact. And we can go into further discussion about that if you'd like to at this point, or we can hold off until the end. Mr. McLaughlin shaking his Please. head yes. 
Okay. Yeah. So this is where just, I hand it back to Sherry. Just because you know, I, I see I see that that'll become a question if we don't answer it now. Mm-hmm. So it, the reason that you see nine hundred thousand dollars is it has everything to do with thirty one A. And it has to do with the fact that we have certain classrooms that we've designated as class size reduction, which is um, the basically the only way that we're using or the only allotment we're using for thirty one A right now. If we were to reduce uh, our buildings to let's say three elementary schools, we could house all of our students. What we couldn't do is house all of our students and keep our 31A classrooms. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And that we would need split classrooms? Yes. We would yes. Yeah, we would have to go back to the school classroom environment. Mm -hmm. So that's where that comes from. Okay, the second recommendation from the Learning Configurations and Facilities Group is to move Community High School to Romulus High School as a school within a school. Now, we haven't flushed out all of the details of what that would look like. Obviously, this is a concept that we're bringing to you. The budget, the budget implication on that is about a $400,000 savings. That includes closing the building and reducing the staffing. If we go to an evening program only, because that was also discussion at the, in, in this subcommittee, we're going to see a less, less of a savings. That's just an economic reality that the board needs to consider as well. Um, the third recommendation is that adult education program is maintained as an off-site day program and evening program in the, in the school buildings. We're already working on that, um, looking to secure sites, trying to leverage some of the partnerships we're now building with the Romulus uh, City. Um, we're investigating other um, venues to have our daytime programming for our GED and adult ed learners. This would be at no cost to the district. That's a 100% self-sustaining program. It does not come out of general fund at all, and it would continue not to. Becca? Mm -hmm. uh, going back to moving to community high over to the high school, Yep. is that building on the market? Or not, not yet. It is not. Would that put that building on the market if we so choose? If that's the board's pleasure. If the board decided. If the, correct. Right, correct. I mean, uh, I would think there would be a lot of just a lot of things we'd have to look at to be able to do that. To move community mm -hmm. to the high school, we we already started doing some preliminary work just just because we knew that you would ask questions and first we wanted to know if this was even a feasible thing that we could do. Is there room? Is there a way that we can create a school within a school where we've got an alternative setting that's not part of the general general education environment? Um, we have been able to determine that there is a wing of the high school that has its own entrance exit. If we had a different start time and end time, obviously that would be part of the, the, the programming for this. Um, we have a way to move our technologies over there to support the, um, the online learning initiatives. We've kind of investigated that, so the feasibility of it is there. There is room at the high school for it. There's a place for it to keep them with them, themselves as a learning community. Um, Okay, because I, I, the whole purpose of the community high is to get separate them from that high school environment, correct? So now That's we're correct. putting them back. We've created something to get them away from the high school environment. That's correct. And now we're putting them back into the high school environment. I think one of the things I, I would hope that the board would consider is that um, location isn't, doesn't, doesn't define a program. Uh, it's, it's a nice, it's a nice add-on, <laughs> um, but you still, you still run a program based on the parameters and the expectations of that program. We can still run a program understanding that our population for that, su that group of students has dwindled down to, we're anticipating 80 for next year. Wow. That's a very manageable size student population. Now, not to say that that, that 80 can't grow again, mm -hmm. it's, and, and we see it from, a, from a, our perspective all of the stuff that's going around that's taking away students from that, that school program, those are, we're just kind of waiting for them to fail. And it's sad because I, can't, I feel helpless. I can't do anything about it. But these online programs that are running for alternative ed kids, these, these, these models, they don't work for this particular learner. And the state will eventually come in and say, well, guess what? You don't have any completers. We're not going to fund you anymore. So they are going to close. So I guess we're trying to just position ourselves so that we can keep our program moving along, um, yet prepare for that influx of students. Um, once we get to a, a certain size student, then obviously we would have to look at alternative settings as well, because then you can't manage 150. You can't, if, 
if, if a quarter of your students are alternative students, <laughs> then you can't do that within the, the confines of the traditional school. Because if it, if it starts to grow, then we have to look at do right. it all over again right. because right. I guess because they would have to be I'm not I won't say self-contained that's just to me that's too strict but what but I mean is because you have mm -hmm. lunches I mean everything that everything is separate we've kind of already plotted out with our and that that change that different um, late start and late release time is is critical here you know so we're going to be able to share those the lunchroom services yet those students won't be at lunch together okay. we'll be able to share the health class we don't we don't so need to be mingling no. Right. Okay, good. Okay. So and we can program that in. I guess they, but yeah, but they would almost have to mingle at some point. But I mean, they're yeah. in the same building. I can't see them not mingling. But yeah, what? I mean, not, not at risk. lunch. Maybe not sure. at lunch and those kind of things. Right. But Even hallways and well, I mean, out after you know coming out of the building. I mean, it's just some just. No, it I needs to be. You're right. It has to be considered. You're, you're speaking for your, your constituents right. as well, because those are the concerns that yeah. I'm sure members of the community would have. And that's one of the concerns that we're going to have to discuss. And, and you know, one of my questions is going to be on timelines. When do you need to be the trigger point for some of these changes? This being obviously the most visible change at this point in the game. Um, you know, and I just remember how bat crazy this community got when we combined middle school and high school bus runs. And I can hear it now putting those kids in the high school during the same times. I understand the different start and stop times, and I understand the savings may not be the same, but if we went to an evening program, uh, and this was kind of discussed at the committee, mm -hmm. the we don't have to feed them. That's correct. And there's no, it's not a lunch. We don't have a dinner we, program. <laughs> yeah. And if we, if we put them, you know, if we run this program truly separate, what is your concept? Taking the food up to their wing, or are we going to have our cafeteria staff working additional time? Right. Yeah. And we that would, becomes a bargain and a work rules issue. No, it's just it's just adding to their work day. So it, we, would, we would have that lunch back up to, or that preparation time for that lunch back up to the last high school lunch because they start so much later. So logistically, we could do that, whether we brought the food to them or, or you know, we allowed movement through the building, supervised movement, I guess is the point that I'm making. You know, we'd have to decide that, what would be in the best interest of the school. Okay. What, what about their sports? Their sports, they're only eligible to play the sports in their league. Right, so I'm saying, how would, they, how would they facilitate their games? Where would they play that then if we take them? Because you know, they, they play basketball at Mount Pleasant and they flag football. And so how does, how does that athletic They would probably over? just have to reserve another elementary school. Okay, so we'd play at another elementary yeah. school. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And it does not affect our early college. We still have the room. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. The, the question that I would have on, on the sports program is if we're going down to 80 FTEs, is mm -hmm. it going to be financially feasible for us to maintain a separate sports program, or is that going to be an additional drain? That sports program is is so small, so so, small, so yeah. mi minimally funded. They don't have the same funding that their coaches don't have four four thousand dollars stipends with yeah. <laughs> assistant coaches. They well, have yeah. <laughs> you, you they get new students with being on Wayne Road. You still have a bus route plus you're off ninety four now. Right. So that could appeal to some. Right. I mean, I think. Well, I mean, I think the yeah, board's biggest yet. consideration, as, as, as Mrs. Buckley had pointed out, is going to be the perception in the community and what that, what that is going to, to imply. And what, or what is your timeline for anything to do with community high school? Well, I mean, there are staffing that obviously we're going to be issuing um, layoff notices um, April 1st. And in terms of finance, 30 days. Oh, <laughs> duh. Right. It's true, yeah. I mean, this is going to be part of our budget. There's Good call. There's going to be a lot of decisions, and as you mentioned already, it's going to be very busy months. Well, and, and, you know, I did not prepare the board, you know, for action tonight just so that we could hear right. what's going on. Right. But certainly we're going to have to uh, consider, um, you know, I, I don't know that the 18th is going to be soon enough are going to be long enough to allow board members to mull this over. So I think if we place it on the agenda for March 25th, mm -hmm. that that's our regular meeting. Does that give you 
time to put things in place mm -hmm. with layoffs or that April does. 1st is your is your yep. drop dead day right yes. so our time ish oh. ish, ish. <laughs> I guess excuse me Mr. go ahead President. so our timeline this is something that we want to do for the next school year it's our recommendation for the 13 14 school 13, year I have a question about just the building in general. I know we put a lot of money into that building with the, <coughs> the security and um, a lot of the computer centers. And I know you, I just heard you say that the computer um, equipment w is taken care of. What about like all of the security? Yeah. Well, is that something that we will be extracting from those buildings? Okay. That's correct. And I guess. Um, it's I guess I would need to know would like to know what the cost of, of having it removed from there and placed into a new building how is that going to impact us because I know we'll we'll have to pay again right is that figured right. into the savings that you guys already figured it is the moving cost? The construction part definitely right right when I the, say instructions don't don't get me wrong we're not adding rooms mm -hmm. and I think we're Just the two computer labs and that we actually went over with our our consultant on that one and the the cost of running the lines for this because of the location that was selected for this program it's the shortest amount of, of fiber that we would actually have to run so it it's actually the most minimal cost for moving those technology labs and those costs have been factored in so this is an additional that's correct savings beyond that i got a, i just got a couple other questions um what would be, so if our high school started to grow or the program started to grow and we had to say the, after, you know, we got an early college coming on and, you know, we've got every, all these good things happening. So what building at that point would we put things back into? And I know we, I know that's just all hypothetical, but I mean, what's the cost of having to do that? Because I do see our high school growing because especially, so I, with, especially this, with that early college. Early college yeah. I mean, that's all I hear people talking about. Well, a lot's going to depend on enrollment. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as you know, we, the recommendation that we have is to keep four elementary schools for the 13-14 school year. Right. If our enrollment continues to trend down, I don't think this board is going to have any choice but to close an elementary school right. down the road. Mm -hmm. you know, if, and again, that's all dependent on the 13-14 enrollment numbers. Okay. Um, so in my, you know, I call it Rebecca's world, <laughs> as I'm fashioning these things, you know, we've got a little lifeline out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if, well, I see if what the you're growth saying. occurs we right might away, have an elementary school to move them to. Okay, I, so, I, I got exactly. that. How, how, I many, got one other how many more high school students would you need? Is that what you're saying? Like, like <laughs> uh, an influx of high school students? To, yeah. You would need that space for the. Yeah. Well, at? remember exactly. that that high school. I mean, did it <laughs> house you. two thousand students? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of room in high school. Yeah, I know. What, yeah. What amount of students we right. house in some of our buildings? <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's there's a lot of nooks and crannies that yes. we're kind of we've expanded to. I mean, there's some large rooms there, as a matter of fact, that were used for more industrial type of programs mm -hmm. back in the day. They're sitting idle. I mean, worst case scenario, if our student enrollment goes up that high, build walls. We'll build walls. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some space to that side. Of the okay, that's, that's what we're going to be. I just wanted to know that and we had space. Mm -hmm. And another option is we could convert if mm -hmm. we end up with a huge enrollment we could end up with it, converting it to a night program at that point if we if we needed to to you know multi purpose the space uh, one more one more so it makes sense that if we even we don't we're not able to sell that property it still makes sense for if it just sat there it still be more of a savings for us not to have them in that building yes. just for that building to sit there and on average building of that size you're talking just an operational cost about so we have a whole building open for a small amount of students is what now we saying. are running adult we are running we have the luxury of running daytime adult ed programming out of there and I don't okay. want to negate the the value of that because we do have some great GED and high school completion programming going on but we also have in the works plans to relocate that so that we can continue with those services as well. Okay, and where will we put that? 
in, it's in the evening, buildings. it'll be in the schools yeah. because we have space Just available. Actually, um, the library we have a partnership with, which we're redeveloping that partnership. We also have some conversations going on. I know the adult ed manager is talking with the, the uh, council, the city, city mm -hmm. ch uh, chamber of commerce mm -hmm. has a building that's kind of just hanging out there. <laughs> it's not really used during the day. Okay. We're having conversations with the RAC, those types of yeah, locations. The RAC's got those that were supposed to be tutoring rooms that basically are birthday party rooms. Now. Right. We would not have adult ed programming at the high school during mm -hmm. the day. Okay. We don't mix th those age groups. So you guys have done your homework, I see. We have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the majority of the students now, over 80% of the students that are enrolled at Community High School are Romulus resident students. These are our kids. We started with many of them in the kindergarten, preschool, uh, GSRP program, so. Sandy, you had a question? I would just say I would like to see it go the late start, late release, that I'm not in favor. I think that going to an evening program, you'd lose a lot of kids, and, and I, just, I just really feel bad. No child left behind. Right. I'm not going to argue with you, Mrs. Kraut, because I do also feel that if we went to an evening program, that the 80 that we're anticipating for the late start, early, late release would turn down, would, it would probably go down to 40. Yeah. And at that point, what's the point? We can't sustain, the, we can't sustain that what do you because think we still the late have to administer. Start will have impact will have. What time do we start now? They would start probably at 10. So, you know, we would fashion it so that, that their start time doesn't interfere or, or, or have it's completely off bell schedule for them. So we have an entrance point for them. They have one entrance. It, it goes dire directly into the area that those students would be housed in, that school within a school right there. Um, they're in a, in, a, in a hallway of the, of the build, building that, you know, there's, while they could walk through, we're, we're anticipating putting up a temporary barrier, kind of just a visual for student, all students, hey, this isn't a walkthrough anymore. This is, a, this is a school within a school. You have to have correct ID to get into this area. Um, any other questions on we haven't gone through the whole slides but That's just good. on on the uh, community high school because I think we've given them enough questions for them to come back with, with detail and then we can be prepared to debate it uh, on the 25th and give them direction on the 25th no nope. and if you have any questions of course you can call me I can you know offline continue <laughs> on with your presentation. okay so the second subcommittee was the value add. So here is the value add recommendation. Um, early college, <laughs> which we already did. The, cart, the cart was way behind the horse on this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was one. <laughs> and the second one, and, and Dr. Daniels is going to help me with this one, um, develop a continuum of leadership and academic opportunities K-12. So what that means is creating a vertical alignment of activities and initiatives initiatives district-wide that creates a cohesion of I'm a Romulus Community School student. Um, one of the examples that we kind of got in the committee as a whole for this, um, it, I'll just use, our, I'll just use our, our, our colors, you know, our, we're um, burgundy and white. Maroon it's and maroon and white. <laughs> Is there a difference it's between maroon burgundy and white? <laughs> Is there a difference? A really? See, we want our kindergartners getting all mad at me too. We want to create that environment starting in the in the elementary that I am an eagle, you know, see me soar kind of thing. We want to create that kind of continuum, and, but also extend that continuum throughout our curriculum, throughout our just the whole experience of being that, you know. Romulus is eagle. the town of the eagles, not of the aardvarks and six other. <laughs> right. I mean, we can st we can cer certainly still have our differentiation at the at the levels. You know, I mean, we've, here are lions, but but really, I mean, Romulus Community Schools, we're eagles. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I mean, that and that's just an example. Is there anything else you'd like to add to that, um, Dr. That, that's one of the big ones because it helps build community, mm -hmm. and I know one of the one of the persons on the team, the community she lives in. They have that. You you come to elementary school where eagles learn to fly, and then you you go right on up where you take where off and soar. soar. Right. Um, but then also even 
some of the other types of activities that we've started doing. We've got leadership teams at our elementary schools and our middle school and, and the high school and starting to do things across, you know, the, the district and to, to build um, that we are all one. We're little pods, but we're all one. And we're one in a lot of ways. You know, not only that we're egos, but we're leaders. You know, we've got elementary leaders and we've got all the um, recognizing the coordination of curriculum type activities, making sure that it's in, as, as much as we try to do it, even in a, in a more assertive way and where we really make it known to our constituents, to the community, the coordination of the kinds of activities that we're providing for the students. Uh, those are some of those kinds of things that we were looking at. Even like the early college, I and mean, we've already started adopting this, you know, does this impact? This isn't a high school thing. This is a Romulus right. Community Schools thing. That's right. <laughs> you know, and you can go into any of the elementary schools and you see the evidence that we're trying to get our kids college bound mm -hmm. everywhere. But making that something that Everybody knows how do we, and you know it might be part of the marketing that we're talking right. about, but having it so that everyone talks college in some way, you know, and everyone, and it's just a part of our culture, a part of our being, and and those are some of those things that we're talking about. Why couldn't we rename those middle school teams like Junior Eagles? Right. It would really be. It'd be a nice little touch and keep right. them maroon and white and yeah. instead of the Bulldogs or it's the rhymeless, you know, Junior Eagles. Yeah. Of course, when we do that, then we're going to be suckered into buying new uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. There's going to be an expense. I see fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of M&Ms. Oh, but look at that. Once you get that burgundy t-shirt, it can last. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't know where you'd wear a burgundy shirt. Just saying. That maroon and white. I got all these cheers in my head. Maroon and white. <laughs> I'm going to get my color wheel out after this meeting to find out what am I what did I just say? <laughs> okay, last recommendation to the subcommittee is the public relations recommendation. And this should come as no surprise to you um, that that public relations co committee recommendation is to hire a marketing public relations staff and create a marketing budget um, to do so many of the things that um, Velasquez here was was talking about. Um, you know, we need to brand ourselves. We need to have a cohesive plan of how we communicate about what we do, who we are. To I mean, we are as as is it, was, it was Tiffany, right? Yes. Yeah. As Tiffany said, you know, we're. I mean, we got people out out on the East Coast going. Well, that's kind of a cool <laughs> place. Right. I mean, we are we are the best kept secret in the Downriver right. area, <coughs> um, and that's what this position and and this budget would allow for. I put one hundred fifty thousand dollars out there. But I don't know what it's actually going to be. We have to, you know, I'm kind of looking at your faces to see how much further I'm going to go as far as bidding out. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> um, like I we said know, earlier, baby steps. <laughs> right. You know. Yeah. But we know we need to. We we know that we need to put put money into this. We absolutely to, to receive the net effect. And we're not 100 percent sure. This this committee was not sure how to do that without. We're not brand experts. We're not marketing gurus. Um, that's not our mission. We're not very good about talking great things about ourselves either. That's counter, that's counter, counter. To, to our personalities as educators. That's you right. know, we're quiet heroes. Right. <laughs> we're service center yep. heroes. So those are our recommendations, and I'm sure that they'll have lots more discussion. We'll have lots more discussion of these as we go forward with our 13-14 budget. Any questions? The, the one thing that I wanted to do, uh, and again, thank you. You and Sherry did a wonderful job facilitating um, those uh, redesigned committee meetings. And board members, both Sherry and, and Rebecca, uh, alluded to this in both of their presentations. Um, now is the time for us to sharpen our pencils. And, and if you want to make, um, I don't want to say hit lists. If you want to make wish lists or worst case scenario lists on your own, by all means, now is the time to start doing that. If you've got suggestions and ways that, that you think we should be looking from a budget standpoint, 
now's the time because we're going to have an accelerated conversation over the next 30 days and then we're going to have to revisit that decision basically on a monthly basis to make sure we're in line with the targets that are set in place. So this is going to be a very fluid uh, deficit elimination plan in that we're going to have to make sure we're tweaking and, and adjusting mm -hmm. and, and doing that. So please, if you have ideas, um, concerns, please communicate them either through myself or to Dr. Daniels. Um, if you send them to me, they'll be forwarded on as from a board member, not from that board member. So if, if you want anonymity, we can funnel it that way so that nobody feels to be on a hunt or whatever. That's completely fine. We need to have candid conversations. Now's the time to do that. Anybody have any questions tonight that they're ready to hit with? If not, we'll move forward. Okay, thank you. Next item is the sale of the property um, update and action. Um, board members, you did have passed out at your uh, places when you got here today the actual purchase agreement. Um, yes, it's very wordy. Um, it's all the legalese. Um, you also received a topic sheet uh, that was presented. Um, I will let Dr. Daniels uh, discuss with you the chain of events that led to this formal offer being presented. Dr. Daniels um, and and Sherry help me when uh, in February we were approached to say that we had someone who was interested in making us an offer um, we were listed at and I don't have that right in front of me what was it two it. okay the property was listed at two hundred and fifty one thousand four hundred dollars and the, the first offer that we received was $150,000. 150, and um, we countered with 200000 And they... I can take it from here. Okay, thanks. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the counter was 200000 and um, our real estate agent basically went to them with that counter offer. And we were told that um, for that for this particular... Um, organization or company uh, if anything was over 195,000 basically they had to go for board approval and they weren't sure they were going to get it so the best that they could do was come back with an offer of about 180,000 so that's what we have before us is an offer and again this is for a vacant lot yes, there's it is. no building on this it's just about eight acres it's yep, a little over a little over eight acres of property um, and the the final tendered offer from Crown Enterprises is one hundred and eighty thousand dollars. So uh, before we start discussing this, uh, you know, there should be a motion on the floor. Um, so at this point, I would entertain a motion. Is there a topic sheet? Yes. No, there is a topic sheet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, I move that the Board of Education concur with the recommendation of the administ administration and approve the sale of the vacant lot to Crown Enterprises, Inc., as outlined in the purchase agreement for $180,000. I'm sorry, that's moved no, by Mrs. Uh, Funderburg, supported by Mr. Thie. Yeah. Okay, questions or comments? Could, um, Ms. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, Mrs. Carlton, then you, John. What do we spend every summer mowing the grass to keep it within code? I honestly don't know the answer to that. I'm not even sure if we go to that property. Oh. This is property that's located on Beverly Road. It's correct? on Smith Road. That's on Smith Road. Smith Road. Smith Road. Smith Road. Smith Road. It, it, it must have been. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Unless yeah. 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 demolished the building, yeah. I'm not sure. That's, what I was, with that's by the recycling. Yeah. That's good. So that's, is Crown Enterprising the recycling They are company? a transportation company. Oh, okay. And this piece of property is adjacent to their property, so. Right at Smith and Middlebow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, there's not much. That probably helps. There's not, not trees much. Mostly, yeah. So it's not yeah. mowing whatever. Yeah. It's, it's mostly trees. And it's anymore. the professional judgment of our real estate yes. broker that this is probably the best yes. we're going to do on a vacant property. Now, I can tell you this is the only, you know, this is the only yeah. offer 
Um, we haven't had anyone else, anyone else um, look at the property. Especially where it's said, I would imagine yeah, there's it would not be, a lot have of to be something commercial or yeah. something. Well, on the other side of it. I don't. Be the only two people really interested. I don't know. There's the nothing on the other side of it. It's off. It's off. It's off Smith Road. It's an <laughs> old subdivision that um, the airport bought out, and uh -huh. then you have one. Recycling used place. to be part of well recycling is way down uh, this is old part of old central transport which okay, yeah. there's a there's a building there with semis so it's yep. basically I think they're moving their facility <laughs> yep. a little bit their, mm -hmm. yeah because they're the truck they, they need to park trucks mm -hmm. and everything yep. so there's no other businesses on Smith Road other than uh, the recycling way down at Merriman any other questions hearing none all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries seven and zero. Court chair. Thank, Thank you. you. One down? No. <laughs> One down, four to go. Was that factored into our budget? Well, all of them are factored into our budget, but you know, this helps I us mean, a little. I mean, for this amount. Yes. Okay. This is one hundred and eighty thousand right. dollars that is ours. You know, we don't have to. Project. Well, actually, the budget was was factored in at the listing price. Yes, so, you're so, right. That's what I'm you're right. You're right. It was yes. budgeted at two fifty one, but at least we have one hundred and eighty that we're right. going to yeah. put okay. in the bank. Mm -hmm. Right. Hopefully, before the bond refunding happens. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, with that uh, item twelve, there is no item under other. The next item is communications and expressions from the public. I have no forms. Did anybody? Nobody has anything to bring up. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. I wonder why I don't have a score. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Um, we'll move into item 14 while we're waiting for the score. Any questions? I'm sorry. Well, obviously, it must have just started. we don't have 100 points yet, so it's still going on. Uh, questions and concerns of board members? We'll start at the end. Ms. Bowles, do you have anything this evening? No, no, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kraut? No. Ms. Funderburg? No, not this time. You're not going to talk about the owl oh. vomit? Oh. oh. Okay, so we went to. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. McLaughlin and I and uh, Dr. Daniels had an opportunity to visit the hands-on science fair over at Romulus <laughs> Elementary on Friday. Ick. And we had the lovely opportunity <laughs> of having a wonderful lunch. They fed us pizza and salad, and then they took us back into the back for the big, huge surprise, which was dissecting owl pellets. <laughs> so I had Jacob Hensley, who was the most adorable fourth grader, explain to me the digestive system of an owl. And really, they have two stomachs. One is the digestive tract, and the other is a reservoir where um, the remains that are not digestible, which is divided by the gizzard. I never knew what a gizzard was for. Now I know. It filters the bones and the fur from the, the, the edible part of, of the, the prey that they eat. And they regurgitate it back up into like this oh, yeah. hard knot of like fur and it, it just like it looks crazy it looks like a cat and so it's like a cat i let jacob do all of the dissecting <laughs> as i uh, watched with him but it and actually once they got down to the bones it, it didn't gross me out as bad <laughs> but i even took a picture of of them uh being able to after they dissected it they began to assemble the bones on a skeletal a skeletal map of um, it was a vole which is a type of rodent that they eat and so definitely uh, an experience that again I watched <laughs> but it was really really nice to really get to see the kids engaged so in this engaged. particular activity but I think the one thing that really really stood out to me the most that I kind of walked away with was near the end they started kind of visiting each other's sites and as they got an opportunity to start you know really kind of pulling apart and putting together the skeletons what they began doing was they they started kind of camarading together and so oh well you don't have a skull i've got five over here so let me go get you one of mine so that i'm more than sure that once they completed this project Every student had at least one particular <laughs> bone, vertebrae, skull, rib, uh, to be able to kind of identify on their, their skeletal map 
so that they could turn it in as a final project. And that, that's what I walked away with was the fact that they came together as a classroom and as a team and actually really worked diligently on those projects. So, yeah, it was really cool. And was Mrs. Jordan the teacher? <coughs> yes, Mrs. Yes, Jordan. She did an yes. exceptional job. An yes. awesome yes. job. And I, I guess also, too, just the fact that they were able to um, one of the things that, that we hear of, often at this table is that if a student can teach it back to you, then they've grasped, they, they, they comprehend it, they understand it, they know it. And so they're able to teach it back to you. And Jacob did an excellent job. Yes. Thank so you. Are you done? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you for helping me with my diet because I'm no longer hungry. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, I have a couple things. Uh, I just want to say um, congratulations to the Romulus Boys basketball team. They won districts on Friday. Go Eagles. They're playing right now, so I am not very happy that I don't have a score yet, but I'm going to find out why in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jonathan did check, so it was 25-20. They started at 7, so I'm thinking it's got to be more than that. Now. Is that the red and white team? Oh, that's the maroon. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, we have kindergarten roundup coming uh, April 24th from 1 to 8 at Corey. So that's for the listening audience. And if you know anybody that we have some, we need to round up our kindergartners. And I think that is all I have. Mr. Thede. Uh, after Danielle's story, if uh, Steve could just put a PG-13 rating in tonight's <laughs> meeting instead of a normal G rating. <laughs> the kids will like it. Yeah. It was slow. Ooh, very descriptive. Mrs. Beard? No, I have nothing to Almost said Mrs. Beard. All right. Danielle's story, yeah. Oh, no, um, you um, I had a couple things. Obviously, you know, the, the owl thing. And, you know, I learned something new. I didn't realize owls don't hoot. That's right. They mm -hmm. screech. Right. And I was shown the, the, the I'm going to call it the wrong thing, but the vocabulary board where they make um, the, the assumptions and they, they, uh, they prove themselves wrong by doing the research and the data. And it was absolutely wonderful, as, as uh, Ms. Funderburg was saying, about the collaboration w between the students. There was 100% team aspect. And, uh, you know, I got to give props out to Mrs. Jordan, and, I, and I'll do this again in a, in a note as well, but the classroom management that I saw, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it, it was just phenomenal. There was 35 kids in that room plus parents. Yeah, about and parents. you would you would think that kids would be bouncing off the walls, and it it was really a very uh, academic experience, and it it, it was disgusting. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I wimped out. Um, board members, two things: um, the legislative luncheon that's being hosted at the high school next third. I'm sorry, next Friday, the 22nd. Um, if you haven't, let me know if you're coming or not. Please do so, like tomorrow. Uh, Chef Banks needs to know how many uh, to prepare for, so I'd like to be able to give him that information. Also, the calendars that were passed out at your seats tonight, they show board members' visit to Wick Elementary on the 22nd. That's being rescheduled. We didn't realize that there was a conflict there with the uh, legislative lunch, so we will uh, watch your calendars for an update from, from Mrs. Bositas when she's able to, to get that rescheduled for us. Um, with that, there is need. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank you. My, my right arm here is reminding me. Your two right arms. My two right arms. <laughs> Your three right uh, arms. Remember, um, early college meeting, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, please Facebook it. Please Twitter it. Do whatever to get this out. Um, principals, I appreciate it if you did what you can do to remind people. Again, it's Wednesday. 6 p.m. at the high school auditorium. It is mandatory for students and parents that wish to participate in the early college program this coming fall. Um, so, and if anybody sees this tape, call Lisa Mockeridge at 734-532-1022 to make arrangements uh, to get your child enrolled in this program. Um, with that, 
there is a need for an executive session for personnel and contract negotiations. So uh, at this point, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to go into executive session. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Education go into an executive session for personnel contract negotiations update. Support. And it's been moved by Ms. Funderburg, supported by Mrs. Kraut. Is that the voice I heard down that end? There were two of us. Actually, there was like several. Um, all those in favor, please sign. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Oh, we need to do roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ms. Bowles? Yes. Ms. Krell? Yes. Ms. Funderburg? Yes. Ms. Buckley? Yes. Mrs. Beard? Yes. Mr. McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. Thede? Yes. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, of course, we are going to go into executive session. Uh, there there is no any. action to be taken after this meeting, so you can have a great evening and we'll see you next time. Chair will entertain a motion to go back into open session. So moved. It's been moved by Ms. Funderburg. Support. Supported by Mrs. Kraut. Have a roll call vote, please. Mrs. Bowles. Yes. Mrs. Kraut. Yes. Mrs. Funderburg. Yes. Mrs. Buckley. Yes. Mrs. Beard. Yes. Mr. McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. Thede. Yes. That it. This meeting motion is. Motion to adjourn. Support. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> been moved by Mrs. Kraut, supported by Ms. Funderburg. To adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Oh, I'm up already. Meeting is adjourned at 10:10 10, 10 p.m. Oh, Thank, oh you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.